Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Civivi Brazen, or at least that's how I'm gonna pronounce it. This knife is available right now. I'll link it right down in the description for you guys to check out. There's a couple of different forms that it comes in. Uh, both drop point and tanto configuration. Uh, you can also get it in Damascus, as you're seeing here. This is Civivi's Damascus. Uh, it'll perform roughly the same as 440C from what I understand. Um, the tanto blades that are non-Damascus come in D2, and the drop point blades that are non-Damascus come in 14C28N, which makes this model very interesting in the drop point configuration. D2 is fine, uh, and the Tanto is fine, right? Um, but uh, yeah, at the price tag, 14C28N, this is pretty cool. So you can check it all out down in the description, lots of different colors, things like that. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, do a uh, overall length measurement. Boy, I stumbled around that one there. Eight inches overall. And your blade length is going to come in at about three and a half inches. Your cutting edge is going to come in just shy of three and a half inches. So nice generic full-size knife. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. Uh, right in between. Still definitely a large knife. It's really closer to the Rat 1 than it is to the Rat 2. We'll just do a couple more. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? And last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade bug out. Uh, let's go ahead and do carry profile, give you a look at the action here real quick. This is running on bearings and it's very, very smooth. This was provided by Civivi, by the way. Uh, thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here, it's really not all that thick. Uh, it's actually slightly thinner than the Para 3. So length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here we are definitely shorter than the PM2 and just a little tiny bit longer than the Para 3. Height-wise, even including the flipper tab, really not coming in all that tall this way. Um, so it shouldn't be too cumbersome in the pocket. For materials on this guy, we're looking at, this is what they call their coarse micarta. It's really not all that coarse. At first glance, it looks kind of like a like a dingy carbon fiber. It's micarta. Uh, it just looks like it has kind of a brick or weave pattern on it. Um, but uh, the standard ones are going to come in G10. I really doubt there's going to be much of a difference in weight uh, between this guy and the standard variant. So we can pretty much assume this is just what they're going to weigh. Uh, coming in at 3.53 ounces, which is pretty much right on an ounce an inch as far as blade to weight uh, ratio. So ratios, people, you're going to be happy with that. On the inside here, you can get my flashlight right down in the description. You can see that we have some milling done for weight reduction on those steel liners. So that's good. They got the balance in there just fine. We'll go ahead and do a hardware check. As per usual, you can get my... Uh, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can get them right down in the description. It's in the uh, section that talks about the tools I use on this channel. We're using a T8 here. And as is the case with pretty much all Civivi knives, we've got T8 across the board, except for the pocket clip screws, which are going to be T6. No big deal. This should be plenty, plenty easy to disassemble. Still juice in the calipers. <laughs> so let's measure blade stock thickness on this guy. Coming in at 100 and 114, it's about 115 thousandths. Pretty typical Civivi there. Anything else that we need to do? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes of the review here. So this is a thumb stud opener and flipper. Uh, I kind of don't understand why they had to have a flipper on it, but it's got a flipper and you know what? It's pretty low uh, profile. It's not really in the way. This is a full size knife and the position of the thumb studs is really good. So manipulating this knife is actually really easy. Civivi is known for just doing straightforward, ultra generic knives and they, it seems like they've got a billion of them. This is one of the most straightforward, generic, full size. I mean, this is like essentially their <laughs> Benchmade Griptilian. The Brazen reminds me a lot of the Griptilian or Ritter Hogue, just in terms of, you can see here the ergonomic lines, kind of the general flow and shape of the knife. It's just a very straightforward eight inch overall knife with a three and a half inch blade, 
that has thumb studs in pretty much exactly the same spot as the Gratillion. So why they had to have a flipper tab on there, I have no idea, because this area could have served as a nice choke up position. Then again, it's a full size knife, so unless you're, you know, unless you're that guy in the comment section who really has to tell everybody how big his hands are. Uh, hello, here's all of us waving at you with our normal size hands. Um, you know, that guy's not gonna be able to hold on to this properly. He's gonna need um, a cold steel Talwar XL um, or I don't know, a telephone pole attached to a, you know, gigantic guillotine or something like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, for everybody else, this is gonna work just fine. It's a full-size knife, right? Ba vast majority of you out there, uh, you're gonna be able to hang on to this no problem. Ease of access to the liner lock is definitely there. You can see that it, uh, the front or the show side scale is cut below uh, the height of the liner lock, and it's very easy to disengage. No double clutch, meaning the detent ball is well up on the face of the blade by the time the blade's flipper tab comes down to meet your finger. So, doing this, is very easy, which is preferable. I like to be able to manipulate my knives with one hand, so that's nice. Ergonomics, very good. <laughs> Typical Civivi. Everything's great except for one thing, and that's this pocket clip, because it, it goes too high. It's You can feel it. Right now, it's not the worst thing in the world. It is annoying, and I really wish that they would change their clips. Uh, I've definitely handled knives with much worse pocket clips, though, so that should not be the reason that you don't buy this knife, right? If, you, if you're not buying it, it shouldn't be like, I love everything except for the pocket clip. The pocket clip is a pretty minor negative detail. The overall look of the knife is great. I'm not a huge fan of Civivi's Damascus. Um, it's okay. Um, the very first time you buy an expensive knife, a lot of people are like, why would I, you know, buy, uh, you know, a three, four, five, six hundred dollar knife in, uh, Damascus, what they, what they don't realize is it's usually damn steel. Um, sometimes, you know, like you can buy a Sabenza in Chad Nichols Damascus, right? Regular Damascus or non-proprietary. That's, I'm not sure what compositions he uses. A lot of people say, why would I, why, why would I do that when I can get Damascus from Civivi for $87? Well, the first time you handle some of the nicer stuff, you go, oh, <laughs> this looks great if this is the first or the only type of Damascus that you've ever seen. Um, but uh, your knives that have some higher quality etching and polishing and things like that, yeah, you kind of... There's there's a big difference between I understand what I'm looking at what you're looking at here up top is um, uh, a uh, sharp by design Evo Typhoon um, that's got damascus steel and it's been polished and the etching is definitely a lot better right so people are, well that's an unfair comparison you're showing a much more expensive knife exactly just pointing out here that um, there is a huge difference between inexpensive and expensive Damascus and once you've been exposed to something like this it's hard to look at something like this and go wow that looks really good on top of that. The D2 and 14C28N variants of this knife, the standard ones, which are less expensive, will perform better. Just trying to make that clear for anybody who's confused about Damascus steel. It is not a superior thing. It's not a generically superior thing. Uh, usually, uh, the two compositions used, whatever they are, are inferior to most of whatever else is available at the general price point. Um, so the only reason to pick this up is if you just really, really like this kind of dark, cloudy etching that they've got on the blade, which I'm not really a fan of. Um, I think the standard versions of the knife look better, uh, and they're going to perform better anyway. So, anyways, kind of have to explain that since <laughs> the variant that I've got here is their Damascus variant. Um, outside of that, outside of the mediocre etching here, the blade is actually done very well, and that's pretty typical for Civivi. The edge is nice and sharp. This Tanto is probably going to be the more robust blade shape out of the tip. Generally speaking, Tantos, unless they're ultra fine and aggressive at the tip, Tantos are going to be a little bit stronger out there. But your day-to-day -day experience with the drop point will probably be better all the way around just because of the general curvature of the blade, slicing, you know, and then resharpening, right? You're not going to have to worry about the secondary edge uh, or changing angles or anything like that. Um, but either way, they both look good. Um, and I doubt that you're going to, you know, experience any sort of weird wonkiness or anything like that in the final cutting bevel. Um, everything's fine. And it's pretty darn thin down at the edge, which is, again, something that you can expect from Civivi knives. Uh, always like how they put their, you know, their logo right in the middle. 
just looks like Capsule Corp to me. <laughs> but I like that it's there and not on the blade. We have too many logos and paragraphs and nasty stuff all over blades nowadays, and so it's nice to see that there. Uh, just a couple of screws. Then we have this backspacer with this big old lanyard loop thing. Um, I, that's different than what they normally do, but okay, it's fine because the lanyard thing is completely and totally out of the way. Uh, so the pocket clip can be where it needs to be and it is in exactly the right place. This will carry completely and totally deep in your pocket, nothing sticking up, out, anything like that. Um, you have mounting positions for left-handed, or a mounting position for left-handed carry. Left-handed people, right, I understand it's a right-handed liner lock, but this is pretty simple to manipulate with your left hand. Reverse flick. Just doing the thumb flick, right? I am right-handed, so uh, this is an incredibly easy to manipulate knife either way. We do have lipped or non-countersunk liner locks. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the liners are not countersunk or uh, recessed into uh, the scales here. So uh, it's an, that's just a less expensive way to do that, right? They, they countersink it in there or they, they recess it in there, it's probably gonna cost a little bit more money to do that. Not much, a little bit. Might reduce weight a little teeny tiny bit, but I don't think it's necessary. I kinda just appreciate that what they did with this. I mean, that's, that's pretty much how they do most of the knives in this part of their line, right? Civivi's, Civivi and Sencut and Wii are kinda weird. They have the, 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 the least expensive Civivi's and all Sencuts are pretty much all almost exactly the same thing. And then there are some oddly more expensive Civivis. Then there's some in-between Civivis and Wii's that are, they're either really expensive Civivis or they're really inexpensive Wii's, which I refer to as Civiwi's. And then we have Wii knives. Um, this is at the, uh, you know, the inexpensive end. But fortunately, Civivis quality uh, is, uh, very, very, very good at this inexpensive end, so I don't really have a problem with it. And I don't have a problem with the liners being lipped instead of recessed. Is I think <laughs> I got away from the point that I was making there <laughs> to come full circle. That's what I was saying. Um, anyways, the, uh, oh, these are actually garaged stops. And whether or not that's actually the, I have no idea. It just reminds me of a car pulling into a garage, right? So what I mean by that is these stops right here, there's no stop pin. These stops kind of follow this cutout area on the blade. Sorry, it's really dark in here, um, or you know, inside the knife. And then they end up contacting these little areas that are these little garaged areas behind the um, the uh, liners there uh, to lock the blade out. Um, or well, that's the uh, that's the surface contact area um, combined with the lock that allows the lock the uh, knife to lock out. Boy, I'm really stumbling around my definition of things today. <laughs> Thanks, Metal Complex. We understand how. <laughs> how blade stops work. Anyways, uh, I kind of like that. It's nice. You get uh, an extra point of contact versus, you know, a regular stop pin. So a little bit more rigidity in the blade. And if it doesn't really help with, you know, strength, there's no, you know, clear, um, you know, uh, indication that it's adding some, some sort of strength or anything like that. It will offer solidity on lockout and you can get the action how you want without there being any blade play. So that's a lot of the reason why I enjoy that setup there. Lockup, you can see here we are locking up pretty darn early. I'll give it a good hard flip so we know where it's actually locking up. Um, yeah, plenty, of, I mean, it doesn't look like very much, but there's still plenty of surface contact, probably about 25% or so, maybe 20%. No blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick, no pivot lash. And the detent's nice. I'll give you guys another look at that. Yeah, that's great. Centering, we're dead on. So how much does this knife cost? Uh, the one you're looking at right here, the Damascus version is $87. Fine, if you just really, really love Damascus. Um, or Civivi's Damascus, which is really... Uh, honestly, uh, Civivi, if you could you know, throw a polish on that of any kind, <laughs> Even if it makes the price go up just a little bit, I really think it would look a lot better. I really do. Um, but there's just, for me, there's just no incentive whatsoever to buy the Damascus versions. Um, they're fine. You know, if it's like, it's your first Damascus knife and you just really want, you know, if you're wondering, is it really Damascus? Yeah, it really is, right? The etching is what brings out the pattern and that's on the surface, but the, it is truly layered steel. 
Um, it's just not going to be like an incredible high performer and it doesn't end up looking very great. And you have to pay, in this case, $37 more for it. Uh, the standard versions of this knife, both in draw point and tanto configuration, D2 or 14C28N, come in at 50 bucks. Easily, the best version, in my opinion, is the drop point in 14C28N. At 50 bucks, that knife is a no-brainer. So, let me be clear about this. I absolutely recommend this knife, not in the form you're seeing here. It's, to me, it's not worth paying the extra money for micarta and damascus go with a drop point and 14 c28n for the best configuration and if you just really like the tanto it's pretty good too uh d2 and uh, tanto coming in at uh, about 50 52 bucks yeah uh at that price point it does make it a budget knife by my definition on this channel which is the only definition that matters because it's my channel <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be going in my cheap knives I like playlist and it's also going to be going in my recommended knives playlist this is a very very generic Civivi but they have a very fair price on it and the design is good it's more of the same but if you're looking for your first good pocket knife or maybe your first Civivi and you just don't want to take any major risks in any direction the Brazen is a great one to start with right it's going to be kind of a for new people, it's going to be one of those gateway folders, right? You're going to go, oh, wow, this is nice. What else is out there, right? So that's pretty much it. I don't know that I really have anything else to say here, guys. Uh, thank you so much to Sabivi for sending this in for me to take a look at. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.